1000 watts, an inverter, and it only weighs about 20 pounds. This is the Gen 1000i from a company named Sportsman. Let's open it up, give it a look. Let's take a quick look at the box. I know there are people like myself that like to see the box. The front and the back are exactly the same. It mentions that it is a four-stroke engine, 0.55 gallon fuel tank, up to 6.3 hours at 50%. It has two outlets, an AC and a DC. The other end cap gives some summaries of what it can run. Also mentions its noise level. It's supposed to be pretty quiet. The engine RPMs type of oil and so on. You can pause that if you want to take a look at it, but that's the box. Again, that's the same. And then just some warnings. You knew there would be a tailgater generator in this video at some point, right? And yes, there will be plenty of videos upcoming comparing these two generators because they both fit the same niche. But size perspective is an important thing, and I felt the tailgater would give you an idea of just how small this Sportsman Gen 1000i actually is. You see that it's about half as wide, just a little over half as wide. It's only about an inch and a half or two inches deeper than the tailgater. It's exactly the same height handle to handle, but what is just spectacularly amazing to me is that this Sportsman Gen 1000i only weighs about 20 pounds. Tailgater, already a very light generator, weighs about 38 pounds. These are both dry weights, but that's 18 pounds lighter. When you consider that the Gen 1000i has an inverter that the tailgater doesn't have. It can do both AC and DC output. It has all kinds of extra features, but yet it's somehow 18 pounds lighter. And speaking of features, let's look at them. Let's see what all features this Gen 1000i comes with and what makes it so special, at least on paper. Let's look at what we get with our Sportsman Gen 1000i. We get some instructions that are very detailed, even includes an important parts diagram. Also have this quick start guide. I love this. This is two-sided, full color. Even comes with a little notes field. I love little details when companies think those out. Comes with a one-year limited, hey, wait a minute. One-year limited, ooh, look at that. Free lifetime technical support. I thought I saw a two-year warranty on the box. Where's the box? The box right here. Yeah, two-year, look, oh. Two-year limited emission warranty, one-year limited warranty, lifetime technical support, okay? A little bit of trickery, but whatever. Whatever works. And you also get a registration card, Buffalo Corporation. I've seen their generators. I guess the Sportsman is their brand. I've seen them around. But that is the instructions packaging. You also get a little baggie. And inside this bag is a spark plug wrench and wow nice and really really nice screwdriver rubberized grip screwdriver shocking to see something that nice in with a little cheap generator and you get your looks like your little dc connector so you can charge batteries on the dc output we'll get to more on that in just a moment but that's what comes with it very basic uh, actually, not even so basic. It comes with some nice things. I really like this screwdriver. Look at that. Very nice. Okay, now let's take a look at the generator itself. Let's start out on the right-hand side. We have a green cover on both the right and the left-hand side, but I don't think you'll really need to remove this right-hand side cover. However, there is a cover that you will need to access periodically. This cover on top here is accessing your spark plug. We'll get to that in just a minute. But before we do, let's look at our tag here. Let you know that it ships without gasoline or oil. That's fine. We have our gas tank and gas cap here on the front top. This gas cap has a valve on it. You can see the valve. I've read uh, this can be uh, a little quirky. We'll get to that in the run video. But for now, there's the gas cap. Go ahead and get this tag off. Inside here, we have a mesh strainer, a very large mesh strainer for your, acts as your fuel filter for your 0.55 gallon gas tank. Have your fill line indicator built into the strainer. Goes in a certain way. See if I can get it turned 
to the proper orientation. Yeah, there we go. Get it down inside. I'm going to put my tag back on here. That way I don't forget to add oil. Very, very important on a four-stroke engine. Okay, on the right-hand side, again, it looks very similar to the left. Just some differences, differences here. Uh, you can see it cut out. This is your choke up top. Turn your choke off and on. Have a primer bulb. You have a little sticker. Gives you kind of some specs. 5,000 RPMs, the wattage, and so on. Have a pull start handle here. This is your fuel. Turn your fuel on and off via that valve. Again, we have our handle up top. On the back, we have our exhaust. See, covered there by some plastic, and it has a warning sticker that the exhaust gets hot, as exhausts tend to do. Now let's get this thing turned around and look at the front. Lower my camera just a bit, and then see if I can zoom in on this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is the front. You'll see that you have on your control panel an on-off switch. Apparently comes on. You have an economy mode. This will limit RPMs to make it quieter and get you some more run time. You have an output light, an overload light. This, I think, runs up to 6 amps. You have an oil alert light. I like that. Let you know when your oil gets low. I believe this has an auto shut off. Have a breaker. Have our DC outlet. Now, remember, it comes with this so you can plug in and charge your batteries this is rated 12 volt 4 amp you gotta be careful with that like lawnmowers things like that you can burn up an uh, burn up a battery pretty quick at 4 amps charging you also have your ac outlet under this little spring-loaded cover now there's not a seal or anything under that which is interesting because these are all sealed up but you also have a good i think this is your ground so you can a little lead there to put a ground to if you want, but that's pretty much it on the front panel. Very basic, but very functional. And remember, this is supposed to be an inverter generator. So let's turn it. Let's get this side cover off and get an up-close look at the engine. Or, well, what all's inside, more than the engine, I'm sure. Okay, our screw's off. By the way, the inside cover doesn't have anything fancy. Pretty plain, but here's our engine and the inside. You can't really see much. Most of it is covered by shrouding, but what we can see is, matter of fact, let me zoom in on this for you so you can see a little bit better. You see that this is our air cleaner cover. Uh, this looks like our carburetor. I'm assuming that is emissions, primer bulb, choke. This is shrouding over our exhaust, and then down here it also shrouds over the case, which leads to our dipstick. Take the dipstick out to add your oil. This only takes 10 ounces of oil. By the way, there's the little tiny dipstick. Looks like it has some indicators, but uh, you fill it up to the threads, basically, until it starts on the threads and get that back on there and then of course our things you could see outside the pull start and the petcock valve so you can see not much on the engine uh, it's very tiny it's a matter of fact it's only a 40 cc four stroke engine we'll get to that in just a second but i see here that there's an emission sticker and it looks like zing Yu. okay this is apparently made by Tsing Yu. I know that company name. They make scooters. Uh, I know that they make some fairly okay Chinese scooters. So I guess that's a good thing that this generator is made by a cycle manufacturer used to making small engines. Okay, now a couple things. This cover is put on with just four little screws or four of this type screw but they go into plastic so you have to be careful you don't want to wrench down on it you start stripping that out i mean you could always go to a larger screw if you ever strip them out also you may want to consider an insert of some kind maybe glue something in there but that's important and another thing i want to mention of course this is a 40 cc engine this is a four stroke engine this is a four-stroke generator. Now, I like that. Some people don't. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just go over a couple of the specs really quick. Uh, it's a 
0.55 gallon fuel tank. We covered that. 40 cc four stroke. Now by comparison, the Harbor Freight Tailgater is a 63 cc two stroke. Now I don't want to start the whole two stroke versus four stroke debate. Some people like two stroke, some like four. I like both, but I prefer four stroke. Uh, if you cannot have to mix your gas and oil, great. But it is fair to mention that per cc on a small engine, a two stroke can put out more power for in theory less weight uh, for at least for what it's made up for. So there's that, but according to this, this is 1,000 watts uh, max and an 800 watts continuous runtime. The Harbor Freight Tailgater 63cc should put out more power, but only rated at 900 max, uh, I think 700 runtime. But I'm sure that has more to do with the quality of the components that they chose for the electrical power output. But this does have a low oil shutdown. Uh, decibels, 56, supposed to be very quiet. Supposed to be quieter than the Stormcat or Tailgater generator. We'll look at that in a comparison video. 5,000 RPM runtime, recoil start, 1.3 horsepower. Small engine, but 1.3 horsepower, not bad. I, I figured it would be less. But let me get it buttoned back up. We'll just kind of give one last look. And then in the next video, we'll get this thing fueled and oiled up and give it a run. Almost forgot, spark plug, take a screw out, slide this open, and there you can see our spark plug. Ooh, boy, that is some tight, tight spacing, and it looks like it's going to be a tiny, tiny little plug. I was going to change this out to an NGK cap and an NGK plug. I may leave that little torch in there uh, for until it goes bad or gives me problems. By the way, this white, that's your fuel tank. So you can see that, but uh, just put this back on, click it into place, tighten it down, and that is the spark plug. We may as well take the right hand cover off and take a look at it since we've gone this far into the unit. It's exactly as I expected, mostly covered in shrouding. Under this is your exhaust manifold and your exhaust, looks like your power generation unit resides down here. All the wiring routing up front to your inverter and your control panel. This is a vent for your head. There's your valve cover. Looks like that's going to be difficult to get to, so you probably have to take off all your plastic shrouding when it comes time to adjust your valves, but that's going to be a long time on this little generator. Here's your coil wire, of course, going to your spark plug cap and your spark plug. This is your fuel tank. This right here is your pull start mechanism, and that is the fan unit going to blow. It's going to use this ducting to blow air by the cylinder and then exit out the back, out those slots by the exhaust. Now what I believe is the inverter is right there. I think that's that metal thing right there. Of course, your control panel is just right up above that. That's pretty much everything underneath the right-hand cover. There's our overview of the Sportsman Gen 1000i. Next video, we'll get this thing out, get it oiled and gassed up, give it a run, and test out that inverter and see how well it works. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.